Hi, I'm Danielle Inane. I'm a certified exercise physiologist here at Wellstar. And I'm Kayla Perry. I'm a registered dietitian at Wellstar Health Place. And what we want to talk to you guys today is about aging and aging gracefully. Okay, we get this question a lot all the time between patients, <laughs> coworkers, and we say, "Gosh, I get older. It makes it harder. It makes it harder to lose weight." So we want to tell you guys a little bit about why it makes it harder, mm -hmm. and give you some examples of what's going on behind the skin, as I like to call it. So the first thing that you need to know is that after the age of 25, every human starts to lose muscle mass. 25 is so young. It's very depressing. It's not <laughs> yeah. It is very depressing, but it's true. So what we wanna talk about are some ways to kind of counteract that, okay? The losing muscle as you age is called sarcopenia. Big medical term, you're welcome. So that big medical term, what that means is that you're losing muscle. Well, what normally happens is that you lose muscle, you don't change your calorie intake, or you eat the same way you used to when you were younger. Maybe as you grow up, you get busier, kids get involved, your routine changes, you don't have time for exercise. Well, then that muscle gets replaced with fat. That's called sarcopenic obesity, okay? So what can happen? Oh, I'm not exercising. Well, what do I do? What do I do? You start exercising, right? Well, it's not always that simple. One of the best things to do to maintain muscle is to use resistance exercise, okay? Unfortunately, ladies, getting on the treadmill or the elliptical for an hour a day is not going to help you maintain muscle and it's not going to help you build your metabolism. While the aerobic exercise is great, don't get me wrong, it really helps your heart and it's very good for preventing diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and a lot of other things, but this is what's going to maintain your muscle. Can I touch it? Oh yeah, you can touch it. You can touch it. Ooh, how much weight is this? Uh, resistance? Probably about five pounds. So okay. you don't even really need that much weight. You don't need that much resistance. The key thing is going to be just adding resistance. So an external load, as you can see here, that's an external load against the muscle. So what can they eat? Yeah, so, you know, Danielle hit the nail on the head there. It really, when you're aging, a lot of your met metabolic decline does end up being because you're losing that muscle. So what can help muscle? One of the best things to help muscle is protein, protein. right? We talk about protein a lot, and it's not that you need a huge, massive amount where you start taking in these 60 gram protein shakes. There's no need for that. You know, your body can only absorb 30 grams at a time anyways, but you do want to be mindful of your protein intake. So of course, things like tuna, fish, chicken, turkey, mm -hmm. all those good animal proteins, eggs, um, have a ton of protein. And you know, you only need about three to four ounces of chicken, which is really not that much, maybe what? about the size of your palm, no. to get almost 30 grams of protein, which is a ton. But the chicken breasts you buy in the store are like the size of your yeah, hand. So you're getting way more than 30 grams of protein. Fun facts. Fun <laughs> right? Facts. But it's an easy way to get protein. Um, you can also get protein from Greek yogurt. This Greek yogurt has 15 grams, which is awesome. Again, a huge chunk of protein mm -hmm. uh, and super tasty, if I may so say so myself. Uh, we also have, you could do protein shakes if you want to. I believe this one has 20. This is a plant-based protein shake that you can do. Again, a really easy, quick way to get a huge chunk. Um, you can do nuts, nut butter, seeds. Mm -hmm. These don't have as much, but they could still be nice to add to a snack just to kind of boost your protein intake. Of course, muscle is not just made from protein. You've got to just eat enough too. You've got to eat enough calories. I find that sometimes as people age, you know, they're just not thinking about it as much. Their life isn't as organized. So sometimes, I know my grandma, she just sits around and eats saltines and peanut butter. I love you, grandma. I'm not making fun of you. <laughs> but I tell her all the time, I was like, you need to eat more. You know, you need to eat more to support your muscle. Muscle is made from a lot of things, not just protein. So make sure you're just eating enough as well. And another thing too, as your muscle declines, your metabolism lives inside your muscle, so right? True. So if your muscle's declining, your metabolism is, declining mm -hmm. technically, but that may also make you not be as hungry, right? right. So you're not gonna be as hungry, so maintaining that muscle can also help keep your hunger up as well. So true. Okay. Yeah. Now, one of the biggest ones, this guy right here. Water. Water. Water, <laughs> okay. Love him. <laughs> I get this a lot with, some, with clients in the past, they would always ask me, you know, have my skin's wrinkling, what if I lose all this weight, how can I ensure that I'm not, I don't have a lot of excess skin. 
The first line of defense that you have is water. The more water you drink, you increase the elasticity in your skin. So think about it this way. This is elastic, right? If I stretch it, it returns back. If I stretch it, it returns back. That's the same thing with your skin, okay? If, you, if your skin is elastic and it's hydrated, then it will stretch and return a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Now, ladies, stretch marks, that's a different beast. That's a, that's, it happens. That's a totally different beast of a very beautiful process, mm -hmm. okay? But again, water can also help mm -hmm. with that. Yeah, so water, not only is it great for your skin, but also directly influences your metabolism. Yeah. You know, your body, what do we need to live? One of those things is water, <laughs> right? And your metabolism keeps you alive. So your metabolism does a lot. It doesn't just burn things. It doesn't just burn energy. It also builds things like right. muscle, right? So you wanna make sure your metabolism is really active. Water can help with that. Um, a lot of people as they age, they also have problems with constipation, yes. hunger. You know, water can help make sure that you're not confusing your hunger signals with thirst um, and also can help just kind of keep your bowels regular as well. If you think about it, digestive health is also also super important. Yes. Um, if you're not absorbing, digesting, eliminating the way you're supposed to, it could be in a way affecting your metabolism, making it hard um, to age gracefully like you'd like to. Right. Um, now, I really like half your body weight in ounces. Do you feel the same way? I 100%. Okay. But there's a key, there's a little caveat <laughs> to that. That's if you're not exercising. Right. Meaning if you don't sweat at all, which if you're not sweating, you should go see a doctor because that's a whole nother medical problem. I sweat a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but if, if you are exercising, you need to make sure that you weigh yourself pre and post exercise. If you lose any weight with that, you need to drink about 12 ounces of water per pound mm -hmm. of body mass that you lose. Mm -hmm. Okay? So let me say that again. Weigh yourself before exercise, weigh yourself after exercise. Now, with that being said, the only time that you're really gonna lose that significant amount of weight during exercise is during any kind of vigorous exercise. So if you're exercising outside when it's hot or humid out, um, if you haven't exercised in a while and you're just sweating a whole lot, which, sure. which will absolutely happen, just make sure, general rule of thumb, if you're not a calculations girl like I am, I'm all about the numbers, so is Kayla. Yeah. But if you're not, <laughs> do one of these before your workout, Try to do one of these during your workout and then one of these after your workout. How big is that? This is about 24 fluid ounces. 24. To be honest, you could even do 12. Okay. You don't have to do a whole one. You could do a 12 before, a 12 during, and then a 12 after, and this would restore your body. Now, metabolically, don't you feel like water does something when you're exercising? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So the more, so think about this, the more, hydrated you are, the thicker your plasma volume is in your blood, so your heart's gonna work better, okay? Well, you cannot exercise unless you have blood flowing to your muscles, period. Your, your muscles literally will not work without blood flowing to them. So the more efficiently that your heart and lungs are working and talking together, the better your workouts are going to be. If you notice, if you eat kind of a crappy junk food diet, yeah. your workouts aren't gonna feel very efficient. They're not gonna feel very effective. Now, if you're eating very clean, you're getting high nutrients like what Kayla is talking about, she's gonna talk a little bit more about in a minute, your workouts are gonna be a lot more effective, okay? So with talking about effective workouts, you can't work out one day a week for three hours and be like, Got it in, and we're done. Unfortunately, unfortunately, <laughs> if it were like that, I would we would not have jobs because right. <laughs> it would be great, and everybody would be the way they want to be and at the health they want to be at. You need to get at least 150 minutes of aerobic exercise per week. So that breakdowns what was that breakdown to? What about like 30 minutes? Mm -hmm. For five times yep. a week? Five yeah. days a week. 30 minutes. I can do math. <laughs> <laughs> 30 minutes, five days a week. That's exactly right. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you don't have five days, totally get it. You could do 50 minutes in three days. Whatever works for you. Now, that's of moderate intensity. So, moderate intensity exercise is going to be anything that you can do for a long period of time, but that's going to cause you to, to talk like this. So, you're winded. Okay, if you can talk like this and you're exercising, you're doing just that. 
exercising. Now, okay? do you feel like, uh, I even hear this in my own appointments, do you feel like people will try to go way above and beyond when they oh. haven't even exercised in months Oh, yeah. Months? yeah. Oh, yeah. They're like, I'm going to do a boot camp, and I've never exercised for like a few years. Yes. Like, don't so do that. that actually happens a lot. <laughs> if you haven't exercised in more than, I would say, a year, if it's been a year or longer, I would just start off with some light walking 10 minutes at a time, work your way up to 15 minutes at a time, equaling about 30 minutes a day. Um, and then once you get to that 30 minutes solid, then you can start increasing the pace, whether that be on a bike or swimming or whatever, whatever that means to you. Yeah. Now, on the flip side of that, you're like, I thought you said resistance training is what maintains the muscle, because it does. Now, this is gonna be a caveat. I have a little side caveat for women, okay? For ladies, this is the most important thing, not only for your muscles, but for your bones. Okay, mm. research shows that Super when women do weight-bearing exercise, like lifting weights, so weight-bearing exercise can be resistance bands, yoga, um, it can be dumbbells, mm. it can be even um, climbing stairs, like if you do stair climbing, ugh, people really like the does stair climber, I don't. Does hiking count? Hiking does count okay, because cool. you're going up an incline. Okay. Man, I feel it after the day after. Yeah, <laughs> Pilates also counts. So you're gonna need to do any kind of weight-bearing exercise at least, at least three days a week, every other day. So 48 hours in between. So if I exercise with a resistance band on Monday, I don't need to, re to um, exercise with that resistance band again until Wednesday. Does that make sense? Yeah. You want to yeah. give your body time to rest and recover. Well, and a part of rest and recovery is the nutrition part. Mm -hmm. So that's why nutrition and exercise have to go together. They cannot exist separately. That's why we're friends. They have <laughs> to go together, right? That rest and recovery includes eating enough calories, you know, yes. eating enough protein, drinking yes. enough water. So you have to think that, you know, getting enough sleep too yeah. is important. Um, that's how you build muscle, right? You yes. build muscle in the, what, the kitchen? Yep. In the bed, not yep. the gym. And <laughs> abs are made on the treadmill. There you go. Unfortunately. <laughs> and in the kitchen. Yeah. Treadmill yeah. and in the kitchen. But yeah. we're not talking about abs. We're talking about aging gracefully. We're <laughs> off topic here. <laughs> we do well, that sometimes. On the subject of frequency, though, I do want to talk about something. Um, I think I sort of briefly mentioned it earlier. I think a lot of people when it comes to nutrition is they might eat like one meal a day. Mm -hmm. They like to skip breakfast, right? Um, snacks aren't really a thought. So I really like when people eat frequently and do include snacks in their life. Um, it can be as simple as like, I really like these kind bars. They've got a little bit of fiber, a little bit of protein. They're very filling. Um, then they're convenient. So even if you are on the go, I think packaged snacks are really nice oh, to yeah. have on hand. Um, of course, ideally, we all want to eat fruits and vegetables all day long, but they're not as convenient as something that might be packaged. Right. Um, so of course, you could do like apple with a little bit of peanut butter or a little baby bell cheese. So try to eat, I like every three to four hours to try and keep your metabolism mm -hmm. rolling because your body really does respond to that frequency, that consistency. Yep and eat breakfast. And Wellstar employees, if you <laughs> go on eSource and you click on our Health 365 page up on, on the eSource homepage, um, Kayla and our other dietitian, Kelly, have provided us with some really good snack recipes. Mm -hmm. So you can pre-make your own snacks and pre-package them um, so that you can eat on the run as well. So that's a really good kind of tip for you. Now, one last thing I did want to mention too, um, when it comes to aging gracefully, I find a lot of people have troubles with Again, constipation, their gut health. Um, and I do firmly believe that that's hugely important to our metabolism. Yes. If we're talking about our metabolism declining, we want to do everything we can to make our metabolism work efficiently. You know, if you have trouble with like any sort of irritable bowel syndrome or celiacs or constipate, anything sort of bothering your gut environment, I think it's really important to pay attention to that. Yep. Of course, drinking water is one of the best ways to help. Um, people are really getting into probiotics now and for a good reason. There's a lot of these like kombucha probiotic drinks that you can try if you want for your digestion and absorption. You could try a probiotic supplement too if you wanted to. Um, and then of course, eating fiber. We talk a lot about probiotics, but I don't mm -hmm. think people talk as much about prebiotics. And prebiotics are what help feed your probiotics because probiotics at the end of the day are bacteria. Mm -hmm. You've got bacteria in your hand right now. Yes. Kind of gross. But, Tasty bacteria. But it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and prebiotics, or basically fibers, um, are a way to kind of feed your bacteria. Um, so you can do, you know, your whole grains like oats, garlic is actually a prebiotic, and onions, and you know, chia seeds, anything that has sort of a peel, like an mm -hmm. apple or something like that. Bananas are a good prebiotic. Um, so if you want a really good, healthy gut environment, focus on, you know, eating a lot of these good fiber foods, maybe try a probiotic. 
Really make sure that you get your water intake. I can't emphasize how important water is and how much it really does for people and their metabolism. Well guys, I think that's about it, right? Yeah, Did we cover it, it? all? <laughs> um, <laughs> if you're interested in working with a duo like us, uh, we have exercise physiologists here at Wellstar Health Place. We also have registered dietitians as well. Um, so if you guys are interested in getting an appointment or um, becoming a member here at Health Place, just click on the link below. Thanks for watching. Bye.